Welcome, Andrea Longo Carter, Chair of the Needham School Committee, and Dr. Liz Lee, Vice Chair of the Needham School Committee. Thank you for joining me. On the beginning of a, of a new school year. Yes. Um, so there's a lot ahead for the Needham School Committee and actually the Needham Public Schools. What are some of the, the key topics and, and areas that uh, you're, you're both been thinking about uh, recently and that will move us into the new year? Sure. I think for me, there are really two things. Uh, one is making sure that our portrait of a Needham graduate strategic vision for all of our students is really infused in everything we do from preschool through postgraduate. I think we've made great strides uh, in the last year, 18 months uh, with that, but we continue to want to make sure that that guides everything we do uh, and is a really powerful experience for all of our students. So that's one, the portrait. And then the other one is advancing our master plan, which deals with rebuilding uh, the Pollard School, the Mitchell School, um, and executing on our facilities master plan. So let's, uh, let's try to get into both of these uh, for a moment. Maybe, uh, Liz, you share with us with the, the portrait of Needham graduate mm -hmm. and the competencies is, uh, ideally, it's based on a, a foundation of equity yes. and, and really having high standards for all kids mm -hmm. so that all kids can, can achieve and grow. Um, when you think about the portrait and the strategic plan and the competencies, what, what, uh, what's most important to you and what are you talking to your colleagues on the school committee about? Yeah, this is uh, one of the initiatives that I find personally most exciting. Um, because our equity initiatives as a district, right, our goals of being becoming an anti-racist school system, for example, are just woven in completely with the portrait work. And in that way, our equity work is suffusing everything that we do, right? Ideally, um, equity work does not come as an add-on that teachers do at various times during the day. Instead, equity, inclusion, diversity work comes through all of the processes that a school district undertakes. And I see our goals as furthering that work within the framework of the portrait of a Needham grad. Some of the conversation nationally and maybe even locally occasionally is that, um, and we, we, we've heard some of this on the, on the parent survey results that, you know, there seems to be, you're, you're talking a lot about equity and, and anti-racist efforts, are, but are you also talking about school and academic standards and academic excellence. And I often say to people, it's not an, you know, an either or, it's an and. Um, how would you advise families who, are, who want to know how we're balancing you know, these topics? Uh, it's such an interesting topic. Um, people often do, for whatever reason, think of it as it's either academic standards or it's equity. But actually, what a lot of the research tells us is that when you have equal opportunities for all kids or equitable opportunities for all kids, all children have better academic outcomes across the board. Um, and that is incredibly powerful um, and it's an incredible byproduct of the work that we're doing. So I, if I had advice for parents, I would say that academics are of course important, but they're just one part of a whole child and that it's okay to take a deep breath and relax and get to know who your child is, what their passions are, and to spend some time feeding those parts of your child instead of some of these other pieces. And, and certainly within the schools, we will complement the work that, that parents are doing to make sure that that's happening. And, and actually, we have some data that suggests that uh, being able to lift all boats, have all students, more mm -hmm. students get involved in advanced coursework actually is happening and, and raising academic standards for, for all of our students. Uh, Andrea, you have this big task ahead of you with the school master plan. Now you mentioned it. Um, can you talk a little bit about, so what does that mean to someone who's watching this? What's the master plan? And we know that Pollard is a focal point uh, this fall. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so the master plan has been developed over many years and a lot of study, a lot of work by a lot of different groups in town. It's not just the school committee putting this forward, but it's really a comprehensive plan to address the critical facilities needs that we have at Pollard, at Mitchell. And so right now, uh, we have applied to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. We've submitted um, a statement of interest and we are asking them to help us renovate and expand the Pollard School. And so we will hear back from them hopefully later this fall, as to whether or not they feel that they can partner with Needham on this project. Irrespective of that, 
the school committee feels very strongly that we need to push ahead with a project at Pollard being our first project. And so what we hope to do is renovate and expand Pollard to take it um, from being a 7th, 8th grade school as it is now to being a 6th, 7th, 8th school. Which is what it used to be. Which is what it used and to be. And which actually the community wanted a while ago and we've had to delay that. Exactly. So we think that we can capture the great parts of High Rock, but also allow for some expanded programming, make it easier on families with a one less transition, and really have this truly, you know, we have great middle school programming right now, but this would be sort of middle school 2.0 perhaps when they're all housed in one building. So what do we do with, okay, so if High Rock moves to Pollard and we, rent, we renovate Pollard, High Rock moves to Pollard, what do we do with High Rock? And where does Mitchell fit into all of this? Sure. So the next phase, so Pollard's phase one, phase two is we renovate the Mitchell School. And while, sorry, rebuild the Mitchell School, not renovate. Yep. While tear it down and start over. <laughs> tear it down and start sure, over. Sure. And while that is happening, the Mitchell students will be relocated to the High Rock School, which is now vacant. This critical piece is, this is hugely critical because it, it means that we don't have to build temporary swing space to house Mitchell students while their school is being rebuilt. So we rebuild Mitchell, brand new school, the students move back there, then we can open High Rock as a sixth elementary school. So we have more elementary capacity and just a lot more flexibility in what we can do, particularly at the elementary level. So Well, and it's true that our enrollment, which is a key part to this, seems to be steady. It's, it's, uh, we're, we're creeping back up to pre-pandemic levels and it does seem to be steady. It's not falling off as it has been in some other communities like Wellesley and, and other communities where, where enrollment is down. Um, you know, one of the things that the school committee, uh, Liz, worked really hard on and w with Andrea was uh, more recently working with several of our employee groups to settle contracts. Um, some of the school committee were more involved in that than others, but right now we have settled contracts for all of our employee groups and, and units, and I think that a, sends a strong message to our employees. Uh, what would you say to them as they begin a new school year? And To our employees? Yeah. Oh, just that. I believe we have the deepest respect for the knowledge um, and experience that they bring into the classroom. And that certainly being a teacher has been challenging in various ways over through the pandemic. Um, but Needham especially has done an amazing job and that we value them deeply. When you when you think about um, the families in Needham and and you know you mentioned the pandemic, we everyone the entire world and even locally families have gone through a lot. Students have gone through a lot. What are some of the messages, you know, uh, Andrea and Liz, that you want to share with families about thinking about school and this this new year ahead? Um, what's some advice that you either give yourself as a parent uh, or you you might give neighbors? Well, I think. Fundamentally, we all have the same goal in mind. We want our kids to be successful, happy, fulfilled as they go through life. And I, that shared common goal really resonates. It's everything we do soup to nuts. And we all want to work together. So I would advise parents to really, you know, things aren't perfect. Things happen. Deep down, know that we have your child's and your family's best interests at heart. And partner with us. Ask questions. Be engaged. Don't jump to, this is horrible. Say, I wonder about that. I'd like to learn more about that. Engage your student. Engage your student's teachers. And ask questions. We all want a child who's going to be happy, healthy, functional, and successful in their future life. And then... When the school year starts, and I have one still in the K-12 school, um, he's an eighth grader, it gets really easy to get bogged down in, you know, the details of what's happening in the classroom. What is he doing? What is he not doing? What should he be doing? What ought he be doing? And um, advice I tell myself and my friends is that you can let go of the I should, I ought, um, and really look like 20 years out. What does your child need to be a happy and healthy adult in 20 or 30 years instead of, you know, in this moment at school? And that changes your perspective on what needs to happen. And that's how I've been um, 
really working to calm myself down when I get a little anxious about the school year. Well, my wife frequently says, as we were raising our daughters, you know, you ride the wave with them. There's some ups and some downs, <laughs> but ultimately things do work out, particularly when they're under the care of the amazing staff in Needham Public Schools and the guidance and direction of the Needham School Committee. If someone would like to get in touch with the school committee, they can go to the district's website to get the email, which is uh, schoolcommittee at needham.k12.ma.us. The other thing is they can come to any of our school committee meetings. We have a public comment portion at the start of our meeting, and we really do want to hear from folks. So come talk at public comment, send us an email. Emails go to the entire school committee, um, and we do want to hear from them. Well, I think that's absolutely the case, and I think all three of us are looking forward to a great year ahead. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs>